If you're anything like me, you booted up Nebulous Fleet Command, played through the tutorials, had some fun skirmishes with the starter fleets, and then opened the ship builder to be instantly overwhelmed and excited at the potential. You may have even taken it further like I did, put together what you thought was a good fleet, went online with it and got absolutely obliterated, usually by people you can't even see or have jammed you before you've seen them and destroy you before you can fight back. I've spent a lot of time since this game came out on Sunday in Early Access trying to work out how it, it ticks. And the first thing that I've discovered that is essential for every fleet is good intelligence. Knowing where your enemy is, is essential. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to build a very cheap, very simple spotting frigate that will give you the extra vision range that you need to detect your enemy, hopefully before they do, so that you can actually fight with purpose. Now the first thing we need to do is just modify this ship so that it is actually a spotting ship. And the reason I say first thing is we because we come already equipped with a radar, the RS-35 frontline radar. This is a good radar. Don't take this video from me to say replace all of your radars on all of your ships. Do not do that. The frontline is very, very good. There are three radars, the parallax, the frontline, and the spyglass. The one that we want to look at in this video is the spyglass radar. If I draw your attention here, you can see the max range on the frontline radar is eight kilometers. The frontline radar has an eight kilometer range and it has reasonably good track. It lets you sweep, which is an important tool to break through jamming, and you can fire at the tracks that it has detected, though you're not gonna hit all the time, you're gonna hit some of the time. The spyglass, has an 11.5 kilometer range. So it gets you that extra bit of distance that if your enemy is just using front lines, and trust me, there are people online right now who have not gone through this properly and don't know about spy glasses, don't know how to set them up. There will be people you're fighting against who just use front, who just use front lines. You'll detect them before they do. Or if they're using spy glasses, you're now on an equal footing because you weren't using them before. The downside on the spy glass is it doesn't have very good track accuracy. What that means is that the tracks that you get off detecting with this radar are not exactly where the enemy ship is, even worse than the front line. And if you were to fire at them, the chances of hitting are very low. But the bonus is you know where the enemy is, and that can give you all the information you need to set things up to destroy them. The other thing to bear in mind is this uses twice the power that the front line does, and we need to take that into effect. So if I equip that, we go from using 43% of our power to 85% of our power, which is most of the available power on the ship, which makes it much harder for us to build it into a combat ship. But that's not what the purpose of this ship is going to be. It is going to be a spotter for me, with a little bit of a backstab potential for later in the game. If it still survives, that's its job. But its main thing is that it's going to detect the enemy for me. In order to eke a little bit more power out of it, however, so I can do more with it, I'm going to replace the drive module. The drives, engine drives of this game also generate power, and I think a lot of people miss that. Um, the basic drive gives you an extra 500 kilowatts. If I were to select the whiplash drive, which is a boosted drive, um, it gives me a little bit more top speed. It gives me a higher chance of taking damage if I use the flank speed command. I turn a little bit slower, but I get another 150 kilowatts of power on top of the FM200. If I install that, we have a little bit more power to play with. Now that I've increased our base power by a bit, I can come in here and actually add a small reactor booster to get an extra 10% power plant efficiency. That drops me up to 5 through 5 kilowatts of power. I'm pretty happy with 25% power to play with. You can, if you want, add another small reactor booster, but the return isn't as high on that one. And I believe it's because the, the reactor booster only works off the base reactor, not the additional things that you've added. So I don't really see the need for a second small reactor booster here, but you could install one if you wanted to this will start to make the ship more expensive. So if you want to think of this as a default chassis to play with, looking at 200 point spotter ship, which is very, very cheap. If you're playing a 2000 point game, that's only 10% of your budget, 3000 points, it's even less. If we want to give this ship the ability to stab out at our enemy though and affect the battle, one of the builds I've been looking at is to add a spotlight illuminator onto it. What the spotlight does is it points at a very, very specific point in space and gives you a very strong radar return on that location. Coupled with the spyglass passive radar that we have, we can detect the enemy from very, very far away and then pick one of them and highlight it for an intense radar return with this radar, meaning we can do things like launch missiles at them with a very good chance of hitting. It's a very, very narrow beam and it's quite long range. It's got a 12,000 meter range. Um, which is interesting because most missiles have a 14,000 meter range, so they work together quite nicely. So if I equip a spotlight, and I'm just going to give it a weapons group, and I really advise that not only do you name all of your weapon groups, but you 
talk about where they're located on the ship. So for instance, I'm gonna call this top spot, so I know that the spotlight is on top of the ship. Now what I could do here is, I'm gonna go overkill, just for this example, you don't have to go this far with it, but we can now add a missile launcher, I could add the MS MLS-2 launcher, it's a slow firing missile launcher, it might actually be useful on this ship because long reload isn't really a big issue, um, and it fires volleys of four missiles, which could be quite handy. But we're going to add a VLS-216 for this example. This lets us mount 16 missiles on, sort of in our hull to fire. And there are a lot of options, as I'm sure you're aware. Most people, of course, using the Thunderhead as a radar-guided missile. Um, we're going to use Hurricanes on this ship. In terms of damage and speed, they're exactly the same. But the difference between the Hurricane and the Thunderhead is the Hurricane is a command-guided missile. It took me a while to get my head around what exactly that meant, but it means the ship that launches the missile guides it to the target with its radar. In this case, if we are highlighting the enemy with our spotlight illuminator, we have a very, very strong radar lock on them, and it means that most of these missiles should hit the target. If we want to, and we want to really push it, we can actually mount two of these on the ship and still have a little bit of power left over, which gives you the potential, I don't know if it's a good idea, of mounting 32 Hurricanes on your spotter ship. I feel that might be a little bit too many eggs in one basket, but just to show you how many points that costs, if we put that in there, it's costing us 516 points, which again, in a 3,000 point fleet, isn't the end of the world. If you wanted to maybe put eight in both launchers, you can do that. It's gonna cost you 388 points, which is hardly anything. That is my very basic spotter ship. The bit up here really isn't that important. I just wanted to show you a nice combo, but the most important thing is, is just being aware that the spyglass radar exists and it's very, very useful. The other thing that I'm playing around with is Corvettes mount with elant detection or electronic warfare suites mounted on them, which gives them elant detection, which means you can detect where enemy radar pings are coming from, which is another way of identifying where they are from. Um, and you can use Corvettes to zip around really quickly, find out where the elant is, and then use your spotlights or your uh, illuminators to find them. And then from there, you can attack the enemy at long range. But it's definitely very important in this game to know where your enemy is before you attack them. What I'll do really quickly is I'll just record a short video of how I use this frigate, and I'll add that onto the end of this. But if you've got any questions or you like this video, please let me know in the comments. I wanna do some more content on this game, so I'd be really keen to hear if you enjoyed it. So what we're doing here is I'm just deploying with the ship that I just showed you how to build. It's deploying on its own. So it gets into a fight, it's going to die. But that's not what I'm here to show you. What I'm showing you is how we detect the enemy, how we spotlight them and how we launch the missiles at them. You probably don't need to watch this. I just thought I'd throw it in on the end. Um, if we get into a fight, we are massively overwhelmed because there's actually a 3000 point fleet in here. So I've come in at the very top of the battle sphere, uh, which is where I would normally we're deploy reading. one of these ships. And I'm just going to give it a move order to go straight ahead for now. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a rotate order to point straight Executing. downwards. And the reason I'm doing that is if you look at the ship, let me just track it, uh, the spotlight radar lock illuminator is on top of my ship. So if I have it pointing or orientated to the system plane with the top, in inverted commas, upwards, the ship will need to roll to use that illuminator. This way, the illuminator is already pointing at where the enemy is going to be as the ship moves forward. And if you're not new to this game and you're wondering why my ship is doing ballet at the start, it's because it had its main engines pointed towards the battle space as it inserted because it needed to do a deacceleration burn on the way in. And now it is turning around so they can use its main engines to thrust forward. So now that I've given it my rotation command, you can see that I've got the spotlight um, pointing downwards. And for those of you who don't know, the shortcut for a rotation is Shift H, and that will give you the circle, the circle that you can then set a rotation with. And the game will always tell you your ship is rolled with a little arrow to show you the direction of the roll. So all we're doing here is we're cruising forward with the ship, waiting to see if we can pick up an enemy um, radar return. Obviously, if I had a fleet, there'd be more ships here. We are at the very top of this battle space. So what I'm actually going to do is maybe just bring us down a little Got bit because we may just curve over the top of the enemy. We want to catch them in our bubble as quickly as possible. And what we want to do is when we detect the enemy, we want to lock them with our spotlight. Once we get them into 12,000 meter range, and then we want to try and burn away from them as fast as we can so that they don't bring us into weapons range. That's the plan. We'll see if we detect anybody. All right, we've just detected two enemy targets, so I'm gonna 
lock onto one with our top spot radio eliminator. You can see we've got the beam from it, and then I'm going to um, Receiving. select our hurricane missiles. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to launch all 16. I'm going to try launching at both targets because they're both being illuminated. We'll Not launch those, confirmed. and then what we're going to do is give a move command away That's from the enemy. Down. Because what we don't want to do is expose ourselves to fire from them while we're launching our missiles. Now, I wouldn't normally fire all my missiles like this, and I also wouldn't normally fire them at the start of the combat. But I'm expecting that we've detected this enemy before they've detected Missile us. Reserve Bearing in mind that the normal radar has an 8,000 kilometer range. And these are fully operational Eight ships. Remaining. So we've hopefully fired off a full missile spread before they've seen us. And I would normally save these missiles for the end of the game, and we just use this ship to detect them. And let's see if any of these missiles hit, because they will have Seawiz, etc. And the Pyotr Ivanovich is already flying away, um, no longer engaged in this combat. If we switch to look at it, you can see the range is kind of holding steady, because the radar track doesn't know exactly where they are. Um, here comes their Seawiz. They are firing at the Pyotr, so they have detected us now. Um, we're actually going to increase the flank speed to try and get a bit further away. Let's see if anything makes it through the Sea Wiz. They are launching Chaff as well. Chaff will do nothing against these type of missiles. There's one impact. They will get a second hit here. Yep, there's a second hit. But a hit on the other ship, no, that misses. So not very many missiles got through, but this is against two completely undamaged enemies. And honestly, firing at the second ship was probably a mistake because of the radar. Um, our ship is managing to avoid most of their fire, and we should quite soon be out of their weapon range. Although they are curving towards us, so we are kind of threading. What we probably want to do is pull up and away. But that's not important for this video. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to end the battle, just to see if we did any damage to them at all. And we did a little bit of... Um, <laughs> I thought for a moment that it was a morale failing status on that ship, but that was the name of it. We did a little bit of damage to the ship. It was just interesting to see how that worked. Obviously, we were in there with one frigate, and I would normally keep those missiles back until much later in the fight. But you can see how we can get like an early striking against them um, and yeah I hope this was useful I hope the ship is maybe useful to you if you decide to build it um, if nothing else give me your suggestions or tell me what you thought I'll catch you later